Hello and welcome to Bite My Pie. If you've just bought a shiny new Windows PC, have booted it up and eventually reached the desktop, you may have noticed that things are looking a little sparse and there's no sign of the programs or apps as we now call them that were previously available on your old computer. Admittedly this isn't as big a problem as it used to be. More and more products have moved online and are now accessible with nothing more than a web browser. But there are still quite a few useful tools that we can install. Historically you'd have needed to install these one by one, probably from a disk, remember those? But now not only can we download our favourite apps, with the help of some special software we can install a lot of them all in one go. The software in question is called Ninite, and no that doesn't mean go to sleep. Ninite is a software installation tool and dramatically simplifies the process of installing a range of free apps. So if this sounds of interest to you, stick around. To get started, open a web browser and search for Ninite. And it's this one we want, Ninite.com. You're about to see just how easy this process is. If we scroll down the screen to the apps section, you can see that they're split into categories. We have web browsers, file sharing, developer tools, messaging, utilities, media, runtimes, online storage, imaging, documents, other, security and compression. And all you need to do is check the boxes of the ones that you want. So I'm going to choose some of my favourite apps. I'm already using the Chrome web browser, but let's have Firefox as well. FileZilla is an excellent FTP program, and Notepad++ is a useful text editor. Everybody seems to be zooming one another these days, and let's have the Thunderbird email client as well. Since this is Windows, Revo Uninstaller is a useful tool, and Windire Stack can be useful as well. Let's grab VLC Media Player, and the Audacity Audio Editor. For a spot of video transcoding there's Handbrake and then I'm going to jump to the imaging section. GIMP is an image manipulation program that I use all the time and let's install the Earth and View Image Viewer as well. When it comes to documents we have the brilliant LibreOffice and I'm going to tick Sumatra PDF too. Everything is a very handy search tool and with this being a Windows PC I'm going to grab Malware Byte. Then finally let's select 7-Zip. OK, so choose all of the software that you'd like to add, remember it's all completely free, and then scroll down the page to where it says Get Your Ninite. Be aware that there is also a professional edition available. This could be useful for businesses where they're rolling out lots of new machines, but for home users the free version is just fine. So let's click on the Get Your Ninite button to download our custom installer. And I'm going to save that to my downloads directory. Once that's done you can close your web browser. Right, let's find the downloaded file. And then we can double click it to launch our custom installer. Then click yes to continue. We can expand the details to show what's happening. As you can see each app downloads and then installs in turn. All without any further interaction. Imagine the time it would take to do each one individually and you start to see the power of this tool. Right, let's hurry things along a little bit, shall we? When the process is completed, we can close the program. And let's also close File Explorer. As you can see, Ninite has also created shortcuts for us on the desktop to most of the apps. Obviously, if you didn't want any of these, it's easy enough to right-click on one and delete. And then we can rearrange the icons. OK, let's take a quick look at what we've got. I've just removed the shortcut to Firefox, but hopefully everyone already knows what a web browser is. As I mentioned earlier, Audacity is an audio editor. So if we were to navigate to an audio file, we can then open it inside the program. And then set about editing the audio file. Right, let's close out of there. If you don't want to lose your changes, remember to save your work. Everything is a powerful search tool. For example, I know that I've got my Ubuntu server video stored on this computer somewhere. But let's say I can't remember where I saved it. If I start typing the name of the file into the search box, you can see that among other things it shows us its location. 
I can even right click on it and open the path. Let's close out of there. FileZilla is an FTP program. This is particularly useful if you use SSH on a Raspberry Pi. By entering your Pi's IP address, username and password, then connecting over port 22, and providing the two devices are both on the same local network, by clicking Quick Connect you'll be able to transfer files back and forth between them. GIMP is an excellent free alternative to the likes of Photoshop. If you're not already familiar with this program I highly recommend you check it out. Handbrake is ideal for your video transcoding needs. By opening a video file you can convert it into a format more suitable for other devices. You can see in the presets that we've got Android, Apple, Chromecast and more listed. When it comes to Windows 10, not everyone's a fan of the photo viewer, so here we can use Earthen View instead. To do this, let's open Settings, and if we go into Apps, and then Default Apps, we're going to change the default photo viewer by clicking on Photos, and then selecting Earthen View from the list. Now if we close out of there and go and find a photo, I've got some in my Pictures directory, if I double click on one it should open in Earth and View and I can easily move between the different images by using these little arrows at the top. Right let's come out of there. LibreOffice is just the job for all your word processing, spreadsheets and presentation needs. Out of the gate it uses open document formats but to get the best compatibility with those using Microsoft Office I'd suggest changing the default file types. From within the options we can do this by expanding the load save section and going to general, then making sure that the document type is set to text document. We can change the always save as from ODF text document to word 2007 to 365 docx. Next change the document type from text to spreadsheet and the always save as from ODF spreadsheet to Excel 2007 to 365 XLSX. Lastly change Spreadsheet to Presentation and ODF Presentation to PowerPoint 2007 to 365 PPTX. We don't want it warning us every time that we're not saving in the ODF default format, so uncheck this box, then click on Apply and select OK. Now if we were to do a spot of word processing for example, when you come to saving the file, Notice that by default the type is now a Word document. OK, let's close out of there. Malware Bytes is a handy tool to keep installed on Windows. It's a good idea to run this from time to time, as it helps us keep our computer free from all those little nasties. I'm not going to do it now, but to get started it's as simple as clicking the scan button. I'll just come out of there. When it comes to checking your email, Mozilla Thunderbird is a great option. If you're using one of the main email providers, it's usually as simple as filling in your name, your email address and entering your password. Then when you click continue, Thunderbird should automatically detect your connection settings. When it displays the settings, just check that it's going to connect using an encrypted SSL or TLS connection. Depending on your provider, it may also ask for permission to connect to your email account. After that, you should be good to go. Notepad++ is a useful text editor especially if you're into coding. A very useful feature in this area is its ability to colour code the text. Take this simple HTML code for example. If we select the language drop down menu and then change none normal text to H HTML, you can see straight away how the code becomes much easier to work with. Right, moving on. When you uninstall software from Windows, it has a nasty habit of leaving some of it behind. That's where Revo Uninstaller comes in. Let's say I no longer wanted Handbrake. If I select the program and then click on the Uninstall button, click on Continue to start the process and Revo Uninstaller will start Handbrake's standard uninstaller, so let's run that. And then click on OK. This is the interesting part. Technically Handbrake is now uninstalled from the computer, but we can now look for any remnants that may have got left behind. There are three scanning modes, safe, moderate and advanced. Safe is the fastest mode and shouldn't cause any issues either. Moderate and advanced will dig increasingly deeper for any leftovers. 
taking longer to complete and having the potential to remove something that may actually still be required. For this reason I'd suggest that these are for more advanced users. I'm going to go with the safe option here and click on scan. As you can see it's still found a few leftover entries so I'll click on select all and then delete. And yes I do want to delete those. And that's it, the process is complete. When it comes to PDFs these days most modern web browsers will open them. But perhaps like me you've had issues printing a PDF from the browser. Or maybe you just prefer to view them in a dedicated app. Whatever the reason, Sumatra PDF might be just the ticket. Now you can open the program and then browse for your document. But perhaps a better way is to find the PDF first. Doing it this way round you'll want to set Sumatra PDF as your default PDF viewer. To do that right click on a PDF and choose properties. And from there click on change. Select Sumatra PDF from the list and then click on OK. Finally click on apply and then on OK again. Now when you double click on any PDF it will open in Sumatra PDF. As you can see the interface is pretty straightforward though there are a few extra options available from the hamburger drop down menu. Right let's close out of there. I imagine most people are familiar with VLC media player these days but if not this is your one stop shop to play practically any media format under the sun. Even all these years later I'm still not sure what the traffic cone is all about. If anyone knows please leave a comment below. Windar Stat is a very visual tool. It scans your computer's drives so that you can see a breakdown of what's consuming all that space. And then you get this very colourful illustration of what's going on. Perhaps more usefully you get this listing in the top section. Here you can see the specific data that's gobbling up your PC's storage. By default the largest items are shown at the top. Have fun analysing what's on your computer. The last desktop shortcut is for Zoom. To use this if you've not already done so you need to sign up for a free online account by clicking here. But in the current climate I imagine a lot of you have already done this in which case you can just sign in. Right the last program I asked Ninite to install was 7-Zip. You'll notice this didn't create a desktop shortcut but it didn't really need to. If you find a document that you want to either compress or extract and right click on it you'll see that on the context menu we now have this 7-zip option and you can perform the archiving operation from there. And there we have our installed apps. Before we finish I'd just like to talk about the subject of updating. As well as installing the programs for us, Ninite contains a very useful feature in this regard. Make sure that you keep hold of the original Ninite installer because to check if all those apps we installed are still up to date we can simply run it again. And as you can see it runs through the installer again but this time it only installs the apps that have an updated version available and skips over all the rest. When it's done we can close out of there. And that brings us to the end of this video. Now when you need to set up multiple apps at once you know the website to head for. It probably won't install every program that you need but there's a nice selection to be going on with. As always if you enjoyed this video please like and subscribe and if you'd like to be notified when I post the next one just click the bell icon. Thanks for watching and until next time take care.